Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm okay, Brian. How are you doing? We got a big day of racing, four graded stakes in New York. We've got big races for the older male division, three of them on Saturday, Brian, and all of them with relatively small fields. Relatively small fields. Oh, you're awesome again out in California. It's not too small, but yeah, it's Breeders' Cup Classic prep day, if you will, Matt. Uh, some of the biggest names won't be running in these Breeders' Cup Classic preps, but still, a lot of horses jockeying for position behind flight line to see if they deserve a shot at the big horse in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We're going to start out in New York, Matt, with uh, what a lot of people think is the second best horse in America. His name, of course, is Life is Good, and Life is Good, I think, scared away the competition in the grade one Woodworth. This is a half a million dollar prestigious historic race, Matt. Grade one, it does not look like a grade one other than the horse who occupies the rail position. Life is Good, uh, one to five, maybe even lower in this nine furlong Woodward. And don't forget, this is the Belmont Fall Meet, but it's held at Aqueduct. Yeah, Brian, no doubt if, if there's ever a classic example of a horse scaring away the competition, uh, the Woodward Shewer looks that way. Uh, life is good installed at a very, very, very low uh, price in the morning line. Uh, wherever you look, he's going to be one to five, one to nine by the time the race goes off. Uh, he beats some. Um, Good horses, much better competition last time in the Whitney. And most of those horses have run away down to Kentucky to run in the Lucas Classic instead. Yeah, and I think the horse that wasn't in the Whitney, Matt, uh, his name is Art Collector. Uh, he, You would have expected him to see, it, as to see him in the Woodward because he's the defending champion of the race. But uh, Art Collector's got a lot of speed, may, may have made this a little bit more of an interesting race, but uh, he did not want to clash with the speed of uh, life is good in the Woodward. So he went to Kentucky as well. As you said, the horses that ran second and third, the very good horses that ran second and third in the Whitney behind life is good. But let's talk about life is good a little bit more. He deserves plenty of talk, Matt. Uh, He's eight of 10 lifetime. His loss at Saratoga last year in a grade one seven furlong race to Jackie's Warrior was a very, very good loss, if you will. And, and I guess the only blemish on his career mark is, is the last 100 yards of the Dubai World Cup, which was supposed to be a very tiring track at Maidan uh, that weekend. Uh, other than that, life is good, has been perfect. Eight for eight. He's now two for two at nine furlongs. Both of those happened this year. Uh, the Pegasus World Cup, where uh, he got the jump on Nick's go, and it was never a race, the defending Breeders' Cup Classic. And uh, uh, Horse of the Year could not uh, ever catch up to Life is Good or even get near Life is Good. And then last time in the Whitney, um, I wondered if I saw a little bit of uh, vulnerability going to distance, the way that uh, Irad Ortiz was swerving out on the turn to to, to push out Hot Rod Charlie even farther or, or swerving to the rail to block a horse who was rallying up the rail, Happy Saver. But still, he's looked pretty good at nine furlongs. Yeah, it seems like that's a pretty good distance for for uh, uh, life is good. Maybe that was just Irad being Irad and doing the kind of things that he does with his, uh, race riding, although I don't know why he would have needed to do that with life is good. Uh, Todd Pletcher continues to talk about how uh, a fantastic life is good is in everything that he does. Every workout is is excellent. And and as we said, uh, I don't know how this horse uh, loses this race unless something unforeseen happens. Yeah, it's horse racing. Anything can happen. But this looks like one of the biggest uh locks, if you will, of the year. Life is good. We're, we're, we're not going to uh, suggest that he's going to lose this Woodward. It is a new surface, a new track, Aqueduct. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, life is good. Towers over this field in every possible way. And I think with Irad Ortiz Jr. drawing the rail on this speed, speedy four-year-old son of Into Mischief is not a bad thing either. He's 
he's going to zoom right out to the lead. A, a horse who also has speed here, Matt, is Thomas Shelby. Thomas Shelby interests me a little bit, not in the beat life is good uh, uh, way, but uh, interests me as a horse because he's now with a new uh, new uh, trainer, if you will, new, under new management, if you will, uh, trained by David Jacobson, and, and sometimes that uh, can help. Thomas Shelby is a consistent horse who's won a lot of races, good speed horse. He's coming off a nice win at Monmouth Park. Yeah, he's come. He's in for in with a new old trainer, shall we say, David Jacobson, back training again. I don't know if his if it's his second or his third uh, return to racing, but he's back, uh, and, and he picked up a uh, uh, law professor. Uh, he excuse me, he picked up Thomas Shelby recently, um, and that allowance win that you talked about at Monmouth Park was in his first start for Jacobson. He had a bunch of really good races in the past uh, at Oaklawn Park, a, a nice horse, a significant step up in class here to face life is good. And as a speed horse, there's speed horses, and then there's life is good. Right. And Thomas Shelby is probably up against it in the Woodward just because of the other speed. His life is good. Still, he's the horse that could keep life is good company uh, for a little while in the Woodward. And Thomas Shelby might be a horse who's sitting on a big race for his new trainer, his uh, second start out, his first start under Jacobson, as you said, Matt, look good at Monmouth Park. Uh, and yeah, we're talking about a big jump up in company, but it's really not if you exclude one horse. Yeah. So you got life is good, and then you got everything else, and everything else is more of grade three quality. Uh, perhaps the only horse that could be better than grade three quality is keep me in mind, and keep me in mind is a horse who's uh, a graded stakes winner as a two-year-old, but he hasn't won a stakes race since. But of course, he kept very good company uh for for the past so uh, going on two years now uh he did get a nice allowance win in his return two starts back the jockey club gold cup good horses uh didn't do a lot when kind of in the middle of the pack finishing fifth there maybe third time back also trained by pletcher like life is good maybe keep me in mind can show something a little bit more in this woodward yeah maybe this uh, uh the competition in this field is uh, uh, is more to the liking of keep me in mind, of course, excluding uh, uh, life is good as the other four battle for the, you know, for the smaller pieces of the purse. Just as, a, just as we've said before, uh, when we talked about the Jockey Club Gold Cup, uh, keep me in mind was moved to the barn of Todd Pletcher, and this will be his third start for Pletcher. Yeah, he ran a lot of good races last year despite yeah. winning. I remember that Jim Dandy where he was lapped on essential quality. Uh, so uh, keep me in mind has some class, certainly the class of the rest of the field as we break uh, life is good, uh, uh, differentiate him from the other four horses in the race. Uh, Law Professor probably is the third choice in here, Matt. Law Professor is a, a pretty interesting horse because he's a stakes winner on both turf and dirt. In fact, he won a stakes race in his last start, which was at Kentucky Downs, proving for his new connections as well, new connections as well for him, that he can uh, win away from Southern California. But Law Professor's been a decent horse, multi-surfaces, coming off the stakes win. He looks like uh, he doesn't have the speed of life as good as Thomas Shelby, but he doesn't come from as far back as keep me in mind or informative. So he should be sitting in third early. Yeah, an interesting horse. Again, you know, in a way similar to Thomas uh, Shelby in that uh, his last start was his first start for a new trainer, that new trainer being Rob Atris. And Rob Atris uh, uh, has a way of, you know, doing good things with horses that are new to his barn. And obviously he did that going down to Kentucky Downs, winning a $400,000 purse, uh, which is no easy thing to do, winning those uh, big fields and tough races on that unique track uh, uh, at Kentucky Downs. As you mentioned, out in California, where I think he was in the barn of Michael McCarthy, uh, he had some good races on the dirt. He was second in uh, in in one of the big graded stakes race, races out there on the dirt. A uh, 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 talented and and multi-dimensional horse that 
uh, will be making his second start for Atras and and I think is a big contender for the second place money. Yeah, he certainly is. And uh, again, interesting turf to dirt, but he's done it before. He's back, he's bounced back and forth between turf and dirt. And he's done it pretty successfully. He's failed in big uh, races before, but uh, maybe this isn't a big race if we're talking about second behind life is good. The other horse in the field is informative. And, and if you look at some of his results from Monmouth Park, you would say informative is a horse who can uh, run second behind life is good in the grade one Woodward because he's a grade three winner last year in the Salvatore Mile at Monmouth Park. And he's a grade three winner most recently this year at Monmouth Park in the uh, in the Islin. Uh, informative, uh, you did it as long shots in those two races, but both of them came at Monmouth Park. Yeah, uh, uh, now a five-year-old, lots and lots of races uh, in his uh, – past performances for Uriah St. Louis based at in parks. And I think Brian, I, I don't know if we would, if we have to go back two years or three years, uh, but he had a big upset win uh, at Aqueduct one winter. Yeah. Well, I, the Islin was last year and the Islin was 80 to one or so uh, along those lines. So informative has, Pulled off some things before. All right, that's that's all we're going to say about the Woodward for now, Matt. Uh, it's life is good, truly life is good, and everybody else in that nine furlong grade one at Aqueduct. Much more, much more interesting race at Churchill Downs on Saturday because we have a competitive field here in this Lucas Classic. Of course, everybody out there knows about the Kentucky Derby winner, Rich Strike. Uh, he he's the horse that uh, households who don't follow racing hardcore know about Matt as an 80 to one winner of this year's Kentucky Derby rich strike. Of course he hasn't won since he's only had two tries. He was sixth in the Belmont fourth in the Travers, a pretty decent fourth in the Travers. Now he tries older horses for the first time here in the Lucas classic. Yeah. And, and I think the connections and certainly the fans of uh, rich strike were encouraged by uh, his run in the uh, his fourth place finish in the Travers, where the second and third and fourth place uh, finishers were were pretty closely uh, uh, bunched together, uh, and uh, I think the trainer Eric Reed felt like uh, his horse was going to get second place, but uh, down the stretch ended up uh, fourth getting back to Churchill Downs, to the scene of the crime, uh, that big Kentucky Derby uh, upset has to be uh, positive for Rich Strike. Yeah, uh, seeing the way he worked at Churchill Downs and, and has worked at Churchill Downs at different times this year, uh, and, and the fact that his only two lifetime wins, of course, one was a maiden claiming, which he won by an absolute pole last year as a two-year-old, but then, of course, the Kentucky Derby, uh, it, it's pretty evident that uh, this is a track that uh, Rich Strike appreciates. I'm not sure, though, Matt, if he's going to appreciate the competition here in the Lucas Classic. You're right, though. He he did run a good force, so close to second in the Travers. That the center was clearly best, but Lucas Cla uh, uh, Rich Strike was um, uh, was lapped onto Zandon, who was lapped onto uh, Cyberknife in that uh, Travers, and uh, you know it wasn't far from second in the Grade One Travers. So maybe this competition isn't a huge jump up, but it. It's older horses for the first time, and he's got three grade one winners in older horses, three hard-hitting older horses in here. Let's start with Hot Rod Charlie, Matt. Uh, he won a race earlier this year, a group two race in Maidan. He hasn't won since, but it's hard to knock the performances he's turned in in those three defeats, starting with a second in the Dubai World Cup. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. You know, most most recently, he was third of the Whitney, and, and again, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show, that was behind uh, Life is Good. Uh, um, he was then second in the Salvatore Mile, uh, battling down the stretch against Mind Control. And and uh, as we saw last weekend, Mind Control came back and won another race uh, uh, going a mile at Parks. Uh, and we know that... Uh, the losses that uh, Hot Rod Charlie has uh, uh, had recently were against very, very good competition. Yeah, and I think we could say that about more than one of the uh, horses in this race. But yeah, Hot Rod Charlie, I think that week, Whitney, uh, it, it, life is good. 
he had to chase life is good in, in a relatively small field. It looks like he might have the same task ahead of him here chasing art collector early in a pretty small field. But there is a difference between life is good and art collector. I think I think most everyone agrees with that, even though art collector is a very good horse. But I also think life is good hurt Hot Rod Charlie's chances when he went out five or six wide on the turn and carried Hot Rod Charlie well out on the turn. So Hot Rod Charlie's back. Again, he's lost three in a row, but uh, probably deserving of favoritism here. But I don't think that's a done deal in any way. I, I, I could see several horses being favored in here. So it's interesting to see what the betting will do. But Hot Rod Charlie's a horse who's won a lot of money and has run a ton of good races over the years even coming in off that three race losing streak. Uh, the horse I mentioned already is the speed of the field is Art Collector, Matt. And uh, Art Collector, as I said, uh, this said no to trying to defend the Woodward, his Woodward win of last year. Uh, and, and uh, you know, obviously they did not want any part of life is good early, or maybe they're trying to get a race in Kentucky before the Breeders' Cup. But I think it's more the former than the latter, but Art Collector, once again, is going good. He didn't finish well last year with the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, pretty dull race there. He didn't start well with a uh, poor race overseas in the desert, but uh, he won the Alley Dar at Saratoga and he won the Charlestown Classic at Charlestown nicely, just as he did last year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when you take into account those losses that you mentioned, Brian, Art Collector has won five out of his last eight starts and, and is a horse that likes to go up uh, on the front end and, and take, uh, 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 take control of the race. I think Bill Mott has done a wonderful job picking out spots for uh, uh, Hot Rod, for, excuse me, for Art Collector, uh, piling up a bunch of wins, piling up purse money, and then, you know, taking a shot in a couple of big races also. Yeah, speed is always dangerous, as we as we say all the time, as we saw with society in the cotillion last week. Speed is always dangerous. Our collector is the speed, but Hot Rod Charlie does have enough early speed to uh, to effectively chase uh, Art Collector early. So that that could be a race within its race. I wouldn't be surprised to see when Hot Rod Charlie knocks on the door of Art Collector at the head of the stretch. That first uh, few strides decide the race right there, Matt. Whether Art Collector can repel at all, Hot Rod Charlie or if Hot Rod Charlie can edge in front of Art Collector early in the Churchill down stretch. Of course, we haven't mentioned Happy Saver yet, Matt. And if you look at Happy Saver, he's been, he's had second-itis of late going back to last year. Although the last four seconds, Mass, Maxfield last fall, Olympiad this spring, more recently, Flightline and Life is Good. So you can't run second to a much better string of horses than Happy Saver has run second two in his last four races. You took the words right out of my mouth, Brian. I was going to rattle off those four horses that uh, 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 Happy Saver lost to when he has piled up those second place finishes. I don't know. Maybe he's got second-itis, but uh, uh, there is not a life as good in this field. There's not a flight line. There's not an Olympiad. Probably not even a Max field in here. So, uh no doubt, though, Brian, whatever way you want to look at those seconds, uh, Happy Saver is going to be in the mix at the end. And maybe he's getting the right kind of setup if, in fact, Art Collector and Hot Rod Charlie knock heads a little bit early. Uh, uh, we know Happy Saver will be sitting not too far behind. Yeah, Happy Saver could sit as a good trip or Art Collector and Hot Rod Charlie could string things out a little bit. And uh, it, it becomes a little bit tougher for Happy Saber. He doesn't have that huge burst of speed that some of the top horses in the world have. So I'm a little bit worried about Happy Saber as far as getting them both. And uh, a little worried that it, Happy Saber might be uh, uh, ready for his, what would be what, his sixth straight second set. We'll, we'll see though. But Happy Saber, certainly a big contender written by Johnny Velasquez. And we said Rich Strike's a horse, or I said Rich Strike's a horse who looks to like Churchill Downs. Happy Saver's now run a, a few good races because he ran la very well last year at Churchill in, in the Clark behind Maxfield, and uh, he ran a good race testing Olympiad in the stretch of the Ali Shiva before Olympiad repelled him 
uh, in the last 16th of a mile there. So happy saver, a big threat. Those are the big four. King Fury is a two-time stakes winner, Churchill Downs. Chess Chief has not been good this year. You want to you want to mention anything about those two long shots in this six horse field? A couple of decent, you know, uh, uh, stakes horses, but they're running into, you know, as you said, a big four uh, that are pretty darn good. Yeah, King Fury is a very well bred horse who, on occasion, has looked the part. Uh, he's only had two races this year, and his last one was an improvement when he got back to dirt at Churchill Downs, a, a very competitive third in a listed stakes. But as Matt said, it, it, it's a big uh, it's a big step up to the big four. There's one other Breeders' Cup Classic prep race this weekend, Matt. We didn't highlight it as one of our races of the week, but it happens out at Santa Anita. It's the awesome again. And I, I guess I'm going to start with the question for you. Can we take seriously courses for the Breeders' Cup Classic moving forward? Can we take them seriously when they were beaten out a mile and a quarter by 19, 20, 25 lengths or more by flight line in the Pacific Classic? I don't know, Brian. Can we take anybody else seriously if we're, uh, when we're talking about winning the Breeders' Cup Classic where we know that flight line is, is in there? Uh, hey, they might, may, they might all just be running for second place this year behind flight line. But 20% of a $6 million purse, that's a lot of money. Yeah, and, and, I, and as much as I like Flightline, I think he's a very special horse. You know, I, I think there are bigger challenges to come than he saw in the Pacific Classic. Uh, and, and I guess I'm not saying a whole lot there. But uh, horses like Life is Good, Epicenter, maybe Taiba, a few others, I, I think could, uh, could uh, make uh, life a little bit tougher than, for Flightline than he's uh, seen before. But anyway, out there in the awesome again, which is also nine furlongs on Saturday. This one's at Santa Anita, Matt. You got Country Grammar, Dubai World Cup winner over Hot Rod Charlie, and life is good. Uh, but 19 plus lengths behind flight line last time in the Pacific Classic. And then the horses who ran third and fourth in that race, which were Royal Ship, graded multi graded stakes winner, and uh, Express Train, who's won many graded stakes as well. So Three nice, horse, three nice horses, three nice older horses out in California that were just blitzed, absolutely blitzed by Flatline last time. They head the field in this awesome again, but they don't excite me coming off of that drubbing, that absolute drubbing by Flatline. So I want to look at some of the interesting three-year-olds. There's a couple of them, high connection for Bob Baffert, but I've always had a soft spot for slow down Andy, and now he's become a uh, graded stakes winner on both dirt and Turk with a nice win on the grass last time at Del Mar. Can slow, am I crazy or can slow down Andy step up against these older horses, Matt? I, I don't think you're crazy, Brian, because we've seen with this bunch of horses, older male horses out in California, excluding flight line, of course, we've seen all of them take their turn and, and come up with a big race and win a graded stake. Um, so, for me, with this bunch, it's always hard to know when that is is necessarily going to happen. But sure, uh, why not? Uh, it's a field of eight. We got a couple of three-year-olds trying olders for the first time. Bob Baffert uh, has four. He's back in full strength. Four entered in the race, including one of those three-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. And High Connection has at times looked like a talented horse. I think it'll be country grammar for Baffert that is heavily favored in here. Uh, he's the one that was within 20 lengths of flight line last time, but he, he's run some big races over the years. So I think people are still hopeful that country grammar can make some noise in the Breeders' Cup Classic, and I think he'll be a pretty clear favorite. But if you're going to take a poke at someone with odds, um, I'm looking at slow down Andy anyway in this uh, uh, awesome again on Saturday. All right, Matt, we looked at the Woodward. We looked at the Lucas Classic. For, uh, and, and, and for me, that's the race of the week, especially if you're looking at these three Breeders' Cup Classic preps. And we also looked at the uh, uh, Awesome Again out in Santa Anita. The Awesome Again, um, we talked about a little bit, but as the race of the week, we're going top picks with the first two. Matt, uh, I don't think we're going to insult anyone's intelligence out there by picking anybody but life is good in the Woodward. Is that true? Yes, Brian. I, 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 you have to pick. Life is good, uh, and 
and not be labeled a, a chalk eating weasel. It's, it's, it's just, you know, uh, we're talking about uh, the second ranked uh, thoroughbred uh, uh, in the country and life is good. We're talking about a horse that has a stellar record. His only losses were, were, were not were not bad losses and, and it just towers over the field. Towers over them should win. You never know in horse racing for sure, but uh, you know, spectacular bid maybe was the surest thing when he ran in the Woodward against zero horses. But life is good. Looks like the biggest Woodward favorite since uh, spectacular bid won the Woodward by himself 42 years ago. I think keep me in mind who's probably going to be the second choice is the horse likely to pick him up for second place. But uh, more than anything, we want to see what life is good looks like heading into the Breeders' Cup Classic, probably, maybe the Dirt Mile, maybe Defense of the Dirt Mile. But uh, this Woodward performance could give us a good idea of which Breeders' Cup Classic race the talented life is good is headed. A much more interesting race is the Lucas Classic, Matt. And for me, it really came down to two horses. Who's your top pick in the Lucas Classic? Yeah, we talked about there being, you know, uh, four serious contenders for the race. I guess for me, you know, it, it was really kind of hard to separate uh, Art Collector, Hot Rod Charlie, Happy Saver. I can see scenarios where all, uh, you know, all three of them can win the race. I really love the way Bill Mott has handled Art Collector. Um, he's probably going to be the third uh, well, you know, certainly uh, 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 not going to be the favorite in there um, in the Lucas Classic. So I'm going to go with Art Collector. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish I knew uh, for the taping of the show how they were going to bet, but I, I'm just not certain. My best guess is Hot Rod Charlie is the favorite, uh, but I do like him best. I think this is a good spot for Hot Rod Charlie. He knows how to go after speed, and he knows how to uh, – uh, uh, to beat good horses. Art Collector, though, I think is a serious rival. In fact, the two horses I really see uh, this coming down to are our two top picks there, Hot Rod Charlie and Art Collector, because I think, like I mentioned earlier in the show, I think the race will be won at the head of the stretch, and whether Hot Rod Charlie can forge ahead of Art Collector or Art Collector has uh, has a strong answer for Hot Rod Charlie. I think the winner of that battle is going to win the race. I don't believe Hot Happy Saver is going to win. Once again, I, I think he's going to run another good race. But once again, I think he's going to be second or third as he's done. Rich Strike likes the truck. Rich Strike is the horse who could come with a powerful kick. But honestly, I only like him fourth best in here. I'm going with Hot Rod Charlie as my top pick in the Lucas Classic. And and I did mention Slow Down Andy as a, as a long shot hopeful in the awesome again matt that's the show the breeders cup classic prep show featuring life is good at one to five one to ten one to twenty in the woodward let me get a parting shot from you my friend sure brian you know uh, we, we're talking about the, these three final prep races for the breeders cup classic we're only you know we're only about a month or so away from uh breeders cup weekend so uh I assume in our shows heading uh, heading towards the beginning of November, we'll be talking a lot of Breeders' Cup. And as always, I want to thank everybody for watching the show. Yeah, Matt's exactly right. Breeders' Cup will dominate the, the Horse Center show over the next month. Uh, a lot of good races this weekend besides the three that we highlighted here on Horse Center this weekend, uh, two-year-olds and and the rest running uh, all over the place in stakes races at Belmont, Churchill, and Santa Anita especially. I hope you enjoy it, folks. As always, I thank you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at HRN, please do so now and turn those notifications on. A big thanks to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, and our friend Candace Curtis in the Louisville office for the race graphics. Matt and I will be back next week with another episode of Horse Center. We'll see you then. Until then, have a good weekend and good luck.